What's up, YTPC? This is DSG Pipe Smoker with another pipe smoking video, and today I will be reviewing Deceptions Pass by Seattle Pipe Club. Deceptions Pass kind of takes um, a different route from most of the Seattle Pipe Club blends. Most of the Seattle Pipe Club blends are English or Balkan blends, whichever you prefer to call them. Most of them are kitchen sink blends with everything under the sun under them. Um, this kind of departs that. It's a... It's a Vapor Virginia Perique blend. With Black Cavendish, Orientals, Perique, and Virginia in it. Now, it does have a little bit more components than your average Virginia Perique blend, but... It's in the smoke itself, it's mostly a Virginia Perique blend, and you definitely get the gist of that when you start smoking it. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about the appearance, the aroma, and the cut. It's very grassy, and just a little bit of dried fruit. Dried fruit is probably the Perique. But it's a nice, pleasant kind of smell to it. That's what the cut looks like. It's a varied colored cut. There's some real dark tobaccos in there. Probably the Black Cavendish. Um, there's some of the lights. Everything else that's kind of in between. Some of those darks are probably also the Perique. Browner stuff we can imagine is probably the Orientals. Nice varied like I said, colorful blend. It is also a ribbon cut. Wouldn't say quite a shag cut, it's not quite that fine, but it's a nice easy to easy to deal with ribbon cut. So speaking of easy to deal with, let's talk about smoking mechanics. This came at just the perfect moisture content right from the get-go when I got it. Um, it also, because of its cut and its moisture content, it <clears throat> behaves very well. Lights very well, stays lit very well, packs extremely well. You don't really have to do anything to it whatsoever. You just pack it and light it. Relights, if you need them at all, are a breeze. You can smoke this all the way down to the heel without really needing to de-ash it, provided that the pipe isn't too big. But it's a good, decent smoke in that regard. As far as the ash goes, it burns down to a nice light gray. The... Burns at an average rate of about 30 to 45 minutes which is typical of most pipe tobacco. Like I said, this is a very easy going, very easy to deal with tobacco due to its cut and its moisture content. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a medium bodied blend and a medium strength blend. Nicotine was noticeable, but nothing too severe. I'd say it was about low medium and flavor was about medium full ish so not bad this would be a good all-day smoke at least i consider it a good all-day smoke it's one of the reasons why it made my top three for virginia perique or at least as of the recording of this video it's in the top three um the smoke output is about average it's not too airy but it's got a pretty decent smoke output. Burns very cool. And no nick or uh, no tongue bite. I almost said no nicotine to it. There's nicotine to it, just not a whole lot. But more importantly, no tongue bite. This is another big reason why it made my top three. Again, as of the recording of this video. Because 
I can smoke this at pretty much any pace and not get any tongue bite. That's probably due to the Black Cavendish. Black Cavendish tends to, doesn't always do it. I've seen cases of it where it doesn't do this, but it tends to cool down the smoke, especially in Virginia heavy blends, such as this one. Now, as far as pipe preferences go, it's typical of most Virginia Perique blends. Um, kind of your more typical U-shaped, um, I'm trying to find one here. Kind of your typical U-shaped tobacco pipes. Like, well, that's not a good one to show. Like a billiard, basically. Typical billiard with average dimensions. Smokes it really well. Smokes all of the components very evenly. Um, if you notice any transitions, it's mostly due to the blend itself. It's not really due to the chamber. Um, with that being said, conical bowls also smoke really well with this blend because... In my experience, they really bring out the Perique at the forefront, then as you smoke it down, as you smoke it down the chamber, the conical nature of the bowl really brings out the Virginia, and the sweetness of the Virginia. Narrower chambers, um, such as this pipe, my Carve Your Own pipe, where it's very narrow and very tall, um, also, if it tapers, it helps with that as well. That tends to bring out most of the sweetness of the Virginias, and it kind of tampers down the Perique. Wider bowls tend to do a little bit of the opposite. Not entirely. Um, well, I sh let me put it to you like this. It doesn't entirely... Um, kill the Virginia, but it does definitely bring up the Perique, and it definitely brings up the Orientals. Um, with that being said, I personally prefer to smoke by Virginia Perique blends in conical bowls, because I like the way they smoke. As far as the flavor profile goes, for the most part, it starts off with a very citrusy, tangy, fermented, earthy taste. Um on the draw with peppery notes on the finish and the retrohale. So for the longest time I didn't really Hey guys, so back apparently I exceeded the storage um storage capacity for my phone, but deleted some videos, so we're gonna march on and continue with this review. So like I said I had a hard time pitting down the fermented taste that I was experiencing in this tobacco and didn't realize exactly what it was till I worked for a tree service company. So basically what we would do is, this was a summertime job that I had last year, cut down trees, haul them, chip them in a chipper, and we typically worked a Tuesday-Thursday schedule. Sometimes we worked more days, but Typically in a week we work Tuesday, Thursday. Well, one particular Thursday we left the dump truck full of chipped wood from trees and brush and things of that nature in the dump truck to sit in the hot sun all weekend long till Thursday when we dumped it the next morning. And the smell of those chips that were fermenting from the heat and being enclosed, or semi-enclosed, in the dump truck, kind of reminded me a lot of the fermented taste from what I believe to be the Orientals in this blend. It's kind of interesting how that happens, you know, and it happens a lot in different blends. Sometimes there's just a flavor that you can't pin down because you aren't familiar with it, and then you experience something, or taste something, smell something in the air, and you figure it out. And with this blend, I did. So that's what I get initially. 
in, well actually in general, the fermented earthy floral taste that I was talking about, that's just as present as it is the citrusy kind of sweet notes, that starts to die off about halfway towards the bowl, um, in a conical bowl, and it really dies off in a conical bowl, but in kind of your average dimension bowl, it'll die off more towards the bottom, but the sweetness and sort of the grassy taste from the Virginias and the pepperiness from the Preak, though that tends to die off too in a conical bowl, but those two really start to come alive towards the bottom of the bowl. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this review. In conclusion, this is a really good blend. If you're a fan of Virginia Perique, especially if you want to try something that's a little bit out of the ordinary of most Virginia Periques, um, most Virginia Periques, you know, the Virginias are going to be super sweet and they're going to pair well with the dried fruit, peppery kind of Perique notes. This is a different departure from that, and if you want to try something like that, this might be right up your alley. If you are you don't want that, and you want your Virginia Perique to be, like I said, the sweet, spicy combination, probably not going to enjoy it as much, but I would still encourage you to try it. Um, with that being said, I know that there has been kind of a push for me to do more reviews. I apologize for the delays. I have been busy at work, but to be honest, that's not much of a not much of an excuse. I need to be a little bit more active in my reviews because I know you guys enjoy them. With that being said, some of you have asked about some Dark Fire Kentucky blends to review, and I've got a few. The first one I'm going to review is Irish Flake. Irish Flake is a very strong tobacco. Um, I can't physically tolerate it in something larger than um, something larger than about my Dagger P5 Devil Ants or the Devil Ant shaped corn cob that I have. Um, so this review will come up. I want to do at least one more smoke, if not two, but this is definitely next. And then after that, I'm going to do 1792 Flake, which is kind of an interesting tobacco. It does have that dark-fired Kentucky taste that I like, but with a little something extra. Once I go through all those, I should smoke through enough of these that, in the meantime, I will also be smoking three nuns. So, that is the schedule for today. Peterson's Irish Flake, followed by Samuel Gawa's 1792, and then finally, Bell's Three Nuns. That being said, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. This has been DSG Pipe Smoker with another pipe smoking video. You guys have a good day.